So a couple months back, I made a video asking you guys for your Yu-Gi-Oh! hot takes on the card game, the IP in general, and I read them and gave them a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It was a lot of fun and you guys seemed to really like it, so we're gonna be doing that again today with the comments left on that last video. But this time I'm also gonna try to be a little bit more decisive with my own sort of responses, you know, whether or not I agree or disagree with the take, so that should also make it a little bit more interesting as well. Of course, make sure that you drop a like on the video and subscribe and feel free to leave your own controversial, divisive Yu-Gi-Oh! hot takes down below in the comments. Without further ado, let's jump in. The game is too consistent overall. Decks shouldn't be able to reach the same inboard reliably. Getting off a combo should be a rare thing, not the expected result of going first. I can't get hyped about a big combo when it happens every game. Okay, so I can say right off the bat, I agree with this take. I think that a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! decks today are just kind of, we've reached a point of like hyper consistency, where you don't just have like a starter card, you've got three, six, 12, like starter cards, ways to access your starter card. And it can mean that the first turn is kind of a given, right? To be fair, this is sort of a boon for Yu-Gi-Oh in a way. Like it's gratifying knowing that, you know, you pick your favorite archetype and when you win the coin flip, you'll definitely get to make your play that you have rehearsed you know, over and over and over, make that comfortable, familiar inboard and you're a happy camper. But for me and the way that I sort of view Yu-Gi-Oh or play Yu-Gi-Oh, I don't mind actually starting out with a weaker hand. I don't mind having to, you know, sort of make things work and work my way up to perhaps a stronger, more explosive turn later on. It's how I've always enjoyed playing Yu-Gi-Oh! I like to bluff. If I have a weak hand, I will bluff. If I have maybe just a decent hand, I like the challenge of kind of trying to make the most of what it is that I am given, literally the hand that I am dealt, so to speak. But for me, it's more gratifying when I can still pull out a win in those scenarios instead of just giving up. That said, though, it doesn't feel fun when your opponent always has everything that they want, so I guess the ideal thing here would be if the power level of Yu-Gi-Oh or really just the consistency level of Yu-Gi-Oh could come down a little bit where you know you have to work your way up a little bit more that'd be great on a related note I also think that the hyper consistency that we get with so many decks these days it's why there's probably a little bit more animosity and less patience for cards like Dimension Shifter and Max C and maybe even like a Drone Lockbird or something is because so much feels contingent on that first turn going through without a hitch that anything that kind of impedes it feels like a complete loss and people tend to kind of crumble under that. But if you really think about it, would a card like a Maxi or a Dimension Shifter be super threatening in say like Edison format? The answer is no. The slower the game goes, the more those sort of temporary floodgate style cards, they're less effective in those situ situations. Okay guys, so before we continue today's video, I wanted to share something that's been an absolute game changer for me. And that is the sponsor of today's video, Factor 75. Factor 75 delivers delicious, ready to eat meals right to your door. Every meal is chef crafted, dietitian approved, and never frozen, which means you're getting the freshest ingredients possible. Plus, they're ready to eat in just two minutes. So no more stressing about meal prep or spending hours in the kitchen. One of my favorite things about Factor is actually how they help me stick to my own personal health goals. There's over 35 meals to choose from every week with options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie only. There's literally something for everyone. And we can't forget about the special add-ons that they've got, like smoothies and snacks to just kind of help you stay fueled throughout the day. So if you want to give it a try, you can actually get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next four boxes by just clicking the link in the description or scanning the QR code on screen. You're also supporting my channel, which I would really appreciate so I can keep making awesome content like this. Again, you can just click the link in the video description down below or scan the QR code on screen and you'll get 50% off your first box and 20% off your next four months. My code is APSJUL50. That's Factor 75. Thanks again to them for sponsoring today's video. So this person says, 10 days later after playing Master Duel, I realized a hot take. We prefer playing Yu-Gi-Oh! alone via video games like the World Championship Games or Legacy of the Duelist rather than playing against people and getting raged to quit due to how it is nowadays in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! Hmm. This is actually an interesting take. I've never heard it exactly expressed this way, but I think I get what this person is saying. Yu-Gi-Oh! is or can be more fun when you are playing against the computer or like an AI opponent just in a story mode where you get to kind of test your deck out and play and stuff but there aren't really any stakes. If you mess up you can always just quit and restart and there's not really any lost 
pride because it's like a single player game, right? You're just like losing to the computer. And I get where you might be coming from with that. I disagree with the take though. For me, Yu-Gi-Oh! is really only fun when I'm getting to sit across the table or even, you know, across the screen or whatever from an actual like human opponent. With a computer opponent, it can be great if you just want to like kind of have a test dummy to like learn your deck's combos against. Sure, totally fine. But like, when it comes to actually playing the game, I like to tango with my opponent. I want to make decisions. I want to grind. I want to kind of like use catch 22s and anticipate their plays and kind of react to what they do. Utilize maybe some obscure matchup knowledge that I have to get a leg up. And for me, when I win in that way, it makes me feel better. It makes me feel more gratified and it makes like the whole kind of two player game thing make sense. I do think like old video games have a place and like, you know, playing a single player game is fun. But for me, at least I do still want to like play against somebody. Yu-Gi-Oh should use keywords for their effects. I think it would make the effects easier to understand and save so much space in the effect box. Hmm. So this one's actually kind of funny. If you asked me about this a couple years ago, I would probably have agreed with this take and said like, yes, Yu-Gi-Oh should be using keywords so that can like cut down on the space and all would be well. But I don't know that I agree anymore. I've kind of taken a bit of a 180 on this. And the ironic reason is because I have played a game with keywords in Magic the Gathering. And now that I've kind of dipped my toes into that, I realized the biggest like barrier for me was just learning all the keywords. There's scry and there's like goad and then there's haste and then there's flying and it's like these things where if you've been playing for a long long time it's all you know natural to you. You remember this like the back of your hand is no big deal but when you're a newbie trying to kind of get into it it's really annoying having to basically like look up you know on your phone every single time a new word comes up that you just don't know like what it means. It can really disrupt the flow of play and it kind of just made the game feel I wouldn't say like uninviting but it just it was a, a constant disruption and so I've started to appreciate that Yu-Gi-Oh effects are pretty they're very um they're very clear and precise and they don't exclude any small bits of nuance. You, you very much know what the card does for the most part. And I appreciate that. However, I will say that Yu-Gi-Oh card effects are still long and I do appreciate any opportunity Konami takes to cut down even just a couple of words on them makes a big difference. But more than that, I wish that Konami would change the way that the cards are formatted. Master Duel recently implemented this update where there's like a line break between different effects. I think that the TCG could afford to make more use of bullet points points or maybe like numbers, line breaks, something where reading the effects is easier because like I hate when the whole effect, it's so long that it just has to like fill up the text box and you just kind of have to like find what you're like looking for among all of these different words and kind of sentences and the clauses and hard ones for turns. That's something that I think would be nice if we could, you know, reformat it or maybe trim that down where we can, but I don't think the keyword's the answer. So I would disagree with this take. Really hot take here, no pun intended, burn decks actually take skill to play. I agree agree with this take. I can already say as a long time Yu-Gi-Oh sort of tournament goer, I think that burn decks at a glance seem gimmicky, right? Everybody's going to say, oh, like, you know, you're just trying to cheese your way to a win. Burn decks don't take any skill. You just flip all these burn cards and you win automatically. But I, I think that really kind of couldn't be further from the truth in today's Yu-Gi-Oh, where a lot of decks, as we've mentioned before, are hyper consistent, whereas burn decks kind of aren't. You're just usually stuck with what you draw. A lot of decks these days have planned B's and plan C's, lots of recursion. Burn decks don't get any of that. If you use your cards and like you waste them or don't maximize the amount of burn that you can get from them, because yes, that is a thing. A lot of cards are all about counting how many cards your opponent has in their field or their hand, like secret barrel type cards or chain strike when it comes to like, you know, making sure that the chain goes high enough for chain strike to deal an appropriate amount of damage. All that stuff, you can't really waste any cards with a burn deck. These days, like Yu-Gi-Oh has negation effects. Like there's a lot of removal. There's a lot of like quick effect kind of negation and disruption. So playing a burn deck in today's climate is like really hard. It was I wouldn't say it was ever like easy to play a burn strategy, but today it feels like it's especially hard to play them. And you can kind of tell like burn decks don't show up in the top tables as much of anything. Floodgates are just a transparent, less steps version of combo negate boards. We just accept combo in boards more because we can convince ourselves that we were outskilled thus swallowing the loss more easily. Uh, yeah, I agree with this take. There's always gonna be this push and pull between what is healthy for Yu-Gi-Oh! Are floodgates okay, right? Because they just say that you can't do something. I think that as far as like not letting your opponent play, combo decks kind of are about the same. There's always this argument that I hear that like, well, you know, a combo deck means like you have to memorize a combo tree and kind of adapt your combo based on the hand traps that your opponent plays, whereas with like a floodgate, you just flip it up and win. However, I think that those are 
valid points, but I think like if we're talking just the end result, then yeah, this is just a less steps version of that. Now, that being said, I don't like floodgates. I want to be clear about that. Like, I'm not saying that we should just put them all to three because like they're the best thing ever since sliced bread. No, I'm glad Konami has been like cracking down on them. I just also think that they should be cracking down on like, you know, any Omni Negate style cards as well. Less of the opponent just outright doesn't get to play and maybe more of the like you outplay the opponent. I know it's abstract, but that's just my opinion on it. Not having a Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, Sevens and Go Rush are Rushdoll anime, not regular Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, is actively hurting getting new players. 100% agree with this. Uh, I wouldn't even really call this a hot take to be completely honest, but it would be in the sense that like some people prefer that like our mainline sets are not being filled with what they might consider anime trash. I get it, there's a period of time where it felt like every set would have like all these weird Goki and Dino Wrestler cards and like, you know, just Altergeist cards that you kind of didn't want or need or care about, and they were just from the anime and so it felt like Filler. But in like broadly speaking, I think that having an anime that's actually airing is a great way to onboard people. It's great because people can watch the anime and then like see those same characters, strategies, decks, cards reflected in the physical TCG and it can give them something to aspire to get. So now it's like, okay, I want to play a Soul Burner deck. So that's like why I will get into Yu-Gi-Oh! Whereas now it kind of feels like Konami is a lot more so just resting on their laurels. We get a lot of legacy support, but legacy support might speak to an older player or it might speak to you know, an existing player who likes some of these past animes oh you like you know gx you can get ancient gear cards or whatever but i think having a like running airing anime does a lot for getting people invested in the game new faces wise okay so this one says literally none of these are hot takes these are all the most milk toast reasonable and regurgitated takes i've ever heard this person's referring to all of the hot takes from the last video that people left here's an actual hot take for you and this one's a bit long people don't like advanced format they've just been mind broken like a bunch of cheap whores into thinking they do. Konami should just murder advanced format. Just completely stop supporting it, stop running any events, throw the current advanced format ban list out the window, and just start supporting Edison or an entirely new curated format that's far more limited in power. If they did this, I guarantee you nobody would actually still play advanced format because people don't actually like it, they just play it because it's what Konami supports and pedals to them. Woo! Okay, so it's uh, it's one of those. I agree. This is one of those things that we, like I talk about with friends when it's like, you know, really late night, just kind of like we're just having this think tank of Yu-Gi-Oh! And it usually reaches this point where it's like, there's so much about the modern kind of just advanced format Yu-Gi-Oh! So many issues or problems that some of us have with it. And I sometimes find myself thinking like, do people actually like what Yu-Gi-Oh! is today? I know that's sort of like hyperbole, right? Like there's gonna be somebody who enjoys exactly what they're playing today. But when I look online and I see people who are following the game, I get a sense that like people don't really enjoy like a lot of what Yu-Gi-Oh is kind of putting down right now. People don't enjoy playing against a lot of hand traps. People don't enjoy solitaire kind of, you know, coin flip feeling formats. People don't enjoy tier zero decks, but I do think that they still play because there's just this weird, um, I've heard it described as Stockholm syndrome. I've heard it sort of described as like a suspension bridge effect. You know, maybe it's just like people are so invested in Yu-Gi-Oh! And like, they feel like it's kind of, it's a, a big part of their personality. They don't really have a lot else that they do. It's their hobby. Or maybe there's like this hope that it will eventually at some point kind of become what it once was or become this perfect version of itself. And so until that happens, we will just take the punishment and like keep playing. I think that honestly, if Konami just said, okay, advanced format's ending, but here's like a different format. And that was the only thing that was supported. Then people would just transition to that because I think ultimately people like Yu-Gi-Oh and they like the idea of Yu-Gi-Oh and they will just sort of play what's given to them but it doesn't have to be what advanced format is it's just that this is a game where we're only really offered advanced format I know I say this like a billion times I love Edison I love Goat I've actually played a little bit more of them recently and I do enjoy them but I think like people still want to play with their new Yu-Gi-Oh cards that released in the last few years that doesn't necessarily just mean they want to play with Kashira or Tier Limits or Snake Eye they might want to play with some of the lower power kind of more fun middling decks like Nouvelles or something from the past couple years and they just can't. But if anything at all changed, I think that people would just kind of transition to the new thing. And it would be cool to see Konami try it out. 
I think special summoning needs to be a resource in itself. Let's say a summoning pool starts with five points and one point is used per special summon. At the end of your turn, it refreshes. Then you can add in spells and traps or even monsters that can improve that pool, making them prime targets to get rid of. It would spice up the game and help lower decks function and most decks don't take much to get out a big monster. Hmm, so I, I'm used to hearing people say like, oh, you go need a special summon limit. So like, you know, let, I've never really agreed with those takes because I've always found that they just are kind of short-sighted. Limiting the amount of special summons in the game feels like that would knock a lot of decks just completely out of contention because there are decks like Synchrons or Black Wings or whatever that are like not at all super OP or meta dominating, but they just typically need kind of a lot of special summons to get going. However, I find this is kind of an interesting take because it sort of makes it sound like it's more of a resource system that can build over time. So yes, you are limited in the amount of special summons that you can make within a single turn, especially your first turn, I like the idea of it being something that you can kind of like build to the point where like by your second, third, fourth turn, you're able to do enough special summons to, you know, facilitate what would be a normally like turn one combo. I like the sound of that. I think that it would be a great way to make the first couple turns be kind of more about setup and then the later turns be more about like explosiveness and preparing for whatever your opponent's gonna kind of do in that moment. I've seen a lot of games do this really well. Like the obvious example would be Magic the Gathering with lands where like turn one, you might just kind of play a land and stop. I like the idea that like you could still special summon a few times in your first turn. I think Yu-Gi-Oh still needs the special summon just for decks to feel like Yu-Gi-Oh decks, but it would be cool if it was like limited to only a few special summons at first and then like more later. And like the resources don't really necessarily disappear. So like each turn is like a ramping escalation of speed and intensity. I think that'd be fun. I think that it almost reminds me of like Yu-Gi-Oh 5Ds with like the speed counters that they had in their turbo duel where like you kind of had to accumulate speed and you can utilize that speed to do more things, get more summons and stuff like that, or increase monsters levels. It's definitely like a new take on Yu-Gi-Oh so it would have to be like a separate format, but I would 100% be here for it. So yes, I agree with this take. Master Rule 5 was a mistake. Okay, hmm. So I'm inclined to say I disagree with this take, but let's talk about it a little bit. So Master Rule 4 is the one that I think most people see as the controversial one, right? Where like it adds link monsters and the extra monster zones and like the whole like you had to have link arrows pointing to zones and stuff like that. Master Rule 5, or really Master Rule 4 revision, but sure we'll call it Master Rule 5, it just kind of reverted a lot of that. I don't think that it ruined Yu-Gi-Oh particularly because like my argument would just be that like it kind of made things feel like I guess Master Rule 3 plus links. So like I, I, just, I don't really like entirely get the argument there. Like there are plenty of things that I, I don't like about like kind of just general modern card design, but I would not say that it was the master rules themselves. I think that every master rule at least tried to do a specific thing, and I don't think that any certain one hurt Yu-Gi-Oh much. You could say that like Master Rule 4 kind of felt like it hampered Yu-Gi-Oh at the start. It was very kind of, mm, people didn't love it. It was probably a little bit polarizing, but I think most people kind of seem to rejoice with the Master Rule 4 revision where it's like, oh yeah, I can play like my Synchros and Xyz again. However, the one point I will concede with like this Master Rule 4 and 5 thing is adding a sixth monster card Zone, I think like really kind of up the ceiling of what like a combo deck, particularly a lot of like pile style decks could do more than it's really like talked about. So um, I would like it if we could go back to maybe just having five zone, but like I get that, you know, link monsters are what they are. There's maybe also another conversation to be had about like how Konami really seems like they have trouble with like introducing new things in the game and then kind of trying to walk them back, but then still having to keep the cards functioning. So like an example would be like link monsters, you know, they need that extra monster zone so that like their arrows make any sense for the most part, but also pendulum monsters, like at first pendulums had their own zones, then they kind of like converged those zones back into the left and right spell trap zones because they, they knew that they needed to like still support the mechanic. So it's a little bit weird, but that's not related to the take itself. Hot take, the game should have more mechanics so there's never one deck that can top any one format. There should always be a rock, paper, scissors, of course, add more objects for the sake of this example, type of relationship. And while maybe rock will be the most dominant type of deck at a tournament, it can still lose or pose a challenge that paper would bring. So this is an interesting take. I am not 100% sure that I completely understand it. So I'm going to just sort of address it from what I read and I think that I'm like gonna gather from it. I think that I disagree with this take or, mo well, I think Yu-Gi-Oh already does this. 
Like I think that usually there's like a top deck where there's typically a sort of like anti-meta strategy or something that counters it fairly well. Like there's usually, you know, combo decks and then there's usually like kind of more, I guess what you'd call stun or control strategies. That varies a little bit year over year, format over format. Like right now that might be considered something like Labyrinth perhaps or Runic, but it's also been Fluanderies in the past. True Draco to Zodiac maybe would be an example. Dragon Rulers to Spell book might be a really old example. I think that Yu-Gi-Oh already has this. I get that maybe this person is saying like they don't like tier zero formats, which sure, like 100% agreed. I don't like them either. I'm not really sure if I understand the take, so I'm gonna disagree with it. But if somebody maybe has a better understanding of what this person is maybe saying, then I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Hot take. I think a lot of players have a hard time admitting modern Yu-Gi-Oh is inherently not well balanced and flawed design wise. To be fair, it's not a Yu-Gi-Oh player thing though. Most people have this, if I like slash enjoy it, it must be good mentality. Hmm, yeah, this is kind of a fun, like, just thought piece here. I, uh, I agree with this take. Uh, for, in fear of maybe sounding like a bit of a hypocrite because, like, I complain about a game that I know won't really change. So, I mean, like, even I, I don't know. I think that if you play Yu-Gi-Oh! long enough, you kind of find yourself in one of two camps. Either you are, like we said, that sort of Stockholm Syndrome, like, you just, you play it, you enjoy it, you deal with it despite its issues, or you hate it and, like, kind of despise it and it's like, well, uh, I don't know. I, I think like it's rough. Nobody likes hearing somebody insult their favorite game or kind of point out the flaws in their favorite game. I get a lot of flack from people myself because they're always like, well, Paul, like all you do is complain. You're always complaining about Yu-Gi-Oh. Do you even like it at all? And it's tough because it's like, sometimes you, the thing you like the most is also the thing that you're the most critical of. At least for me, it feels that way. But then I realized there are people who they don't seem to see it like that. Like they think that like to like it means to fully just embrace it and everything it's just, it's fine. I don't really know. I know I said I was gonna try to take more like hard stances with these takes, but like this is one where I agree with the take. I mean, I do think people have a tough time kind of admitting that Yu-Gi-Oh is flawed, but um, yeah, it, it just, sure. You know what, sure, I, I agree with the take. I think AI can help Yu-Gi-Oh. It can help when trying to figure out what cards probably should be banned and which ones should be taken out. Also, when it comes to Master Duel, Yu-Gi-Oh can uh, help determine a deck's power level and match them up with a person of a similar power level for casual matches. I think there's opportunity for AI and Yu-Gi-Oh. Konami just needs to invest money and time into it. So this is interesting. Um, we actually have gotten a bit of a confirmation that Konami is working on some AI system or like mode maybe for Master Duel or something like that, where it's like an AI opponent that you can play against, but that doesn't sound like what's really being talked about in this take in particular. But I do think that AI it could be fun to see in Yu-Gi-Oh. There was like this fun like half joke running theory that Alec and I had, which was that, um, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh Master Duel actually used AI to make its ban list. And I've heard like other people echo this sentiment where early on in Master Duel, it almost felt like, you know, the ban list would just hit these certain cards to like two and that'd be it. Like it just hit like one random card to two. And it almost felt as though it was just an AI making it because it's like, well, okay, if you put, you know, Runic Fountain to two and change nothing else about the Runic deck, let's say, then it would maybe decrease Runic's win rate by like, 2% uh, over the course of like, you know, tens of thousands of games. And against the average player, they're not gonna really feel the effects of that hit, but like, you know, statistically it will bring that win rate slightly lower. Those sort of solutions, I don't love them because I think that like players want to see kind of more blood with their ban lists. So I, I get why that's not really super popular. I'd be interested in like the idea of it. Like I'd like to see it happen. I just don't know that with how mature Yu-Gi-Oh is and how invested people are, they just might not like a ban list that feels too random or feels like it's not, you know, bespoke for their needs at the competitive level. So I agree with the take and then I think that there's potential and I'd like to see it. I disagree. Sure, I, just, I agree with the take. Sure, we'll, we'll, we'll say I agree. I'd say summoning methods are a big part of what ruined the game. The big problem with them is that they devalued monsters into materials. Before synchros, almost every monster in your deck had to do some good self-sufficient thing. Sure, there were cards like Treeborn Frog, but even that's nothing like throwing monsters in your deck of specific levels to make certain synchro and Xyz plays. Then synchros came out and it all started with Junk Sync Bond making you just want to run some level two fodders and it all went downhill from there. This is a major key part for why the game turned into what it is now. Accelerated power creep happened because with cards having been devalued into mere materials rather than cards used for their own Merit, the game had to be more consistent to collect these materials or you get terrible games where people lose simply because they didn't get their combos since their cards on their own couldn't cover for that anymore 
because once again, they were now just mere materials used for their own merit. But that in turn made big cards too easy to play, resulting in a huge acceleration of power creep that's never slowed down since. Okay, uh, I agree with this take, actually. I it's a, it's a bit of a long one, I had to kind of process it, but no, I agree with what this person is saying. Um, I do think post-Synchro, it feels like there are a lot of decks that are kind of the pile deck that just sort of seeks to get out warm bodies. I mean, even if you look at just the Fiendsmith engine, ultimately what it is is warm bodies. That's what a lot of engines were. That's kind of what the adventure token engine was. That's how a lot of decks fundamentally are built now. The cards do less on their own and do more just like when they're combined in tandem. It makes the game more exciting, sure, but I think that um, it does mean that like the role that a monster plays in your main deck might just be it special summons itself or it comes back from the grave and then will just be used like for link material or Xyz material. Is it a good or a bad thing? I mean, I kind of think it's a bad thing. That's maybe more of my Yugi Boomer self coming out. I love liked when cards, you know, Breaker the Magical Warrior, DD Warrior Lady, Exiled Force, right? Like cards kind of having an individual use and standing on their own merits as opposed to just sort of being meant to just leave. Hot take. No card aside from promotional or gag cards that were never meant to be played in the first place should ever be banned. If you own the card, it should be playable in the game. The idea that anything purposely designed for a game by its makers could then be banned, rendering all that time to make it wasted, it just hurts my head. If you can get the card, you should be able to play it and use it. It's up to the players to learn how to overcome seemingly broken strategies, and if they can't figure it out or don't have a method to escape, then I guess they just lose. Honestly, I've not played the card game in ages in reality but I have had a lot of fun playing the video games. And part of that fun is the joy of not only playing with all the cards, but having no limits to the craziness of your decks. Now, I'm not gonna say there shouldn't be limited or semi-limited cards, but the fact that these cards are designed only to get banned because a player was smart enough to think of a good strategy or use for the card hurts my head and it feels like it damages the creative freedom that duelists could have. Hmm, I have heard this take before and I normally kind of find myself opposed to it and all that. And I think I still am opposed. Like I still think that like cards should be banned or should be able to be banned. But I'll say this. I think that, and this is maybe my own hot take that I would like respond to that hot take with. There should be no reason for a card made in the last five years to have to be banned. Okay, so here's what I mean by that. Back in the day when Yu-Gi-Oh was like old or young or whatever you want to call it, Yu-Gi-Oh cards were like kind of just, it was all like stuff was just coming out for the first time. And so there are a lot of unintended interactions, unintended like kind of strategies form that could be just really unfair and OP. Your FTK started to form and like weird locks and ruling discrepancy type of cards like your self-destruct button or your fiber jar kind of things. And I think that a ban list made a lot of sense then. A lot of stuff just ended up being used in ways that were not intended. I think today though, Konami making a card like say Kashdira Arise Heart, where it's just kind of clear that this card's gonna have to get banned. Konami should kind of, they should have known better by now. Like they've made Block Dragon. Like we've lived through this. We know what these types of cards are capable of. Why are we still making them? And I get it. The obvious answer is, well, you know, make the new deck strong, people buy it and then you can ban it and whatever and like sell the next thing. But I really do find that a bit of a, a real, um, it, I guess I'm just disappointed in the card design sometimes. It's not exactly related to the take, although I guess it sort of is, but you guys can let me know what you think about that sort of thing. All right, our final one is, if most people started playing retro formats, the game's going to die. Cards are either dirt cheap or expensive due to not being reprinted, often because they've been in the ban list for 10 plus years. The most prestigious tournaments, Goat World, RBET, etc., are not being held by Konami and the players are not buying products. The trading card game business model doesn't work if people can play with their same cards forever. Uh, it is a hot take, but it is true. Well, okay, there's caveats, there's always caveats. I think that if people only play these legacy formats, then yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh just might not ever get new cards or like might have to even end because it's like, well, okay, I can play with my Edison deck ad nauseum. I don't ever have to actually upgrade it or get new things. I mean, I guess Konami can always release like rarity bumps for old Edison cards. That's something they've been doing recently. But yeah, it's kind of the same reason why I'm imagining they don't want to add like a goat or Edison like Q into Master Duel because once you make those decks you'll never really have to like craft new cards so it wouldn't really be you know in their best interest to do that monetarily. Yeah there's not really a lot more to say about this take other than I do I think it's true like if people only played those formats then like Yu-Gi-Oh might just kind of stagnate and nobody would nobody nothing new would come out or people new stuff would come out and people just wouldn't play it and that would just kind of be the end. It's why I think that Yu-Gi-Oh itself needs to, to dial it back to to like a mid power level format so you can play with new things that have been released in the last few years and like still be able to use it but just not like lose to Snake Eye Fiendsmith or whatever all day long. That's my take anyway. So that concludes our Yu-Gi-Oh! Hot Takes for the day. I tried to get through a few more than I anticipated but it was fun. Let me know what you guys think about all these takes and leave your own controversial ones down below in the comments. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Fast turn.